Hello and welcome back for part two of this tutorial. Today we are once again talking about the Xiao BLE Bluetooth Low Energy Device from Seed Studio and how to control it using Android apps. In the last video we uh, simply controlled digital outputs on this device. In this video we're going to step it up a notch. Today we're going to learn how to control the position of a linear actuator using this microcontroller and an Android device. So here's my setup. I have a 12 volt linear actuator that has a built in feedback potentiometer. So this is a five wire linear actuator powered by a 12 volt battery. And I'm using the BTS 7960 motor controller, which I highly recommend for these linear actuator projects. Over here is the star of the show, the Seed Studio Shell BLE microcontroller which for this example I'm just powering using the USB cable. Okay, the first thing to do inside our code is to include the Arduino BLE library. And for this um, project I have a service that I've called Actuator Service and two characteristics that correspond with that. One is a string type and one is an integer type. Now for your string characteristics, make sure that you include the maximum number of characters or you will get an error that will drive you nuts. I may or may not be speaking about this from experience. Next, we're just declaring a few integers. So we have pins eight and seven, which will be our digital output pins to control our linear actuator for retracting and extending. Uh, we'll use analog pin zero to read the actual position of the linear actuator. We will be using the red and blue built-in LEDs on this board. Command location um, will be received. This will be the number or the integer that we receive from our Android code telling us where to put the linear actuator. And this variable actual location will be the actual location as read by our analog input pin. Here in the setup, we're just declaring our pins as outputs and setting their initial conditions. Notice with the red light, we are setting it low, which for this microcontroller means the red light will be on, the blue light will be off. We will switch those once our uh, microcontroller is connected to our mobile device. These next lines just ensure that the BLE has start it up before we continue on. Uh, once that has occurred, we set a name. This is the name that you will be able to see if you search for Bluetooth devices using your mobile device. We uh, get our services and characteristics going here and assign initial values to both of those. And we begin advertising. This line here, you can just ignore. That was me when I was troubleshooting the code. Now with this next line, once our mobile application connects with our microcontroller, this command here names our mobile device um, central. And if central means if we're connected to that device, here's what I want to do next. Uh, first of all, we're going to turn our red light off and we're going to turn our blue light on. That's just for troubleshooting. That helps us know that we have, in fact, have a connection when we see the blue light. Now while we're connected we're going to do the following things. First of all we're going to find the actual position of our linear actuator rod using our analog read command and then these three statements below are going to compare the actual location of the linear actuator with where we want the actuator to be. So if we're right where we need to be, neither the extend or retract pins will turn on. If we're too far out, we will retract. If we're too far in, we'll extend. Now the purpose of a BLE device is to communicate with our mobile application back and forth. And that's what we're doing at these next few lines. So first of all, we are taking our actual location as determined by our microcontroller. We're converting the number, the analog read number, into a percentage, 0 to 100. And with this line here, we are writing that value 
from the microcontroller, we're sending that over to our mobile device. So on our mobile device, we can see the real-time position of our linear actuator. Now here, we're doing the opposite. We are looking for commands from our mobile device. And if we see that the command location characteristic has changed, we are going to update that value here in our microcontroller. Now this last bit of code will only execute if we have been connected to a mobile device and are no longer connected to that mobile device. So what we want to do is put everything back in a safe position. We want to first of all change the lights, turn the red light on to indicate that we've lost our connection, and we want to turn off both the extend and retract pins so the actuator stops moving. That's it for the Arduino code. Let's jump over to MIT App Inventor and work on the mobile code. One of the first things you're going to want to do in MIT App Inventor is go over to your extensions and make sure that this Bluetooth low energy is in place. You should be able to see it down here if you've imported it correctly. So as far as layout, we have a label, first of all, that will tell us whether or not we are connected to the microcontroller. Two sliders, one will display the actual position of the linear actuator as reported by the microcontroller, and one will be the commanded position, the position we want the linear actuator to go in. After we make that adjustment, we hit the go button, and that will send the value to the microcontroller from the Android device. We'll also display here the numerical value of the actual position of the actuator. That'll be the 0 to 100 percent number that we saw in the Arduino code. Now if we switch over to our block diagram, you may recognize these variables. These are the same numbers that you saw in the Arduino code, the same uh, device name. And this is in order to tell our Android device what device to go look out and find. That's what this screen here, when the screen initializes, we're going to start searching for the device called Actuator BLE, and we are going to connect to that using the service UUID number. Once the mobile app is connected, we will change our label on the front to show that it is connected, and we will register for strings from the microcontroller. Now I seem to have goofed here. We do not need the command string. We only need the position string from our microcontroller. And when we do receive an updated string message from our microcontroller, we're going to take that and we're going to update both the slide bar and the text display to show those actual positions, those live positions of the linear actuator on the screen of our mobile device. And if we click the button on the mobile device, wherever our command slide bar is, we will send that value back to the microcontroller and tell the microcontroller that we want the actuator to move to that position. And then this little last block is just to close the application when we're all done. So let's test this out. Okay, let's see if this works. Right now the actuator is in the central position. If I want it to retract a little, I'll move the slider to the left, hit the go button. As you can see, the actuator is retracting. Likewise, if I want to extend it, the actuator extends. So it seems to be working great. Well, as always, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. I'm getting close to finished on this new workshop, so hopefully I can wrap that up and get back into the video business again. Uh, please leave any comments and videos you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for watching.